G'day, my name is Tom. This is Half-Life's YouTube channel. Welcome back to some more Flight Simulator 2020. Last episode, we flew the Cessna Caravan, and that went very, very well in uh, New Zealand, by the way, that was. Uh, today, we are in, back in Microsoft Flight Simulator again, it's got to turn the sound, um, and we are going to fly a brand new paid aircraft that you can actually purchase right now. This is the Kit Fox. STI or Carefox or yeah the Kit Fox STI yeah otherwise known as the Kit Fox S7 STI but Series 7 STI so we are flying this today I'm gonna to give you like a little bit of a review of it so let's get started so we are flying from where did, we, where did I say I was going from we're gonna do a 30 minute flight from Goan Field so that's Kilo Brava Oscar India Right here from in boys uh, or Boise, Idaho. I think it's boys. And we're taking off of. We're going to start at the um, parking stand. So we've got parking stand 18, and we're flying to to Uniform Zero, which is Smith Prairie. That's about a 20 minute, 30 minute flight, but we're actually going to be flying IFR. So that's going to take us about 27 minutes if we do. Low altitude, or something we do high altitude, it'll be 21 minutes, but we're going to go 27. We're going the long way. So we only have to make one turn here. There's Delta Airlines right there, there we go. Right, so now we're going to actually change the time because it's currently 4.50 a.m. or 10, 10 p.m. in the United States. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go preset and then change the time to about 12, no, not 12 a.m. Yeah, no, about. 12 p.m. local time, which is about there. We'll just do there. And we are flying. Okay, so let me just give, go for, give you a brief of this aircraft. So we can go 91 knots true airspeed, cruise speed. Our max altitude is flight level 250, 5 hours endurance, and 700 nautical miles of range, which is not too bad. Maybe if we go through like every aircraft here, let's see which one actually it's similar to. It's not really actually if let's go to propellers. Because obviously it's a propeller aircraft. Let's see if it what what's would be similar to. In terms of like specs. I don't think it's anything that's similar to it, actually. No, it's not. Alright, so there we go. So which are the liveries? You get two liveries. You've got the grey livery or the red livery. I think we'll fly the grey livery today. Uh, weight and balance will go 50%, 50%. Failure's off. And ATC options. We are flying November 725 Kilo Alpha, which is an aircraft I actually performed this flight today. That's why I'm actually going to do like realistic flights. So we're leaving, it looks like, runway 10, right? So let's go and jump on to the... Let's go and jump into it. So hopefully it gets the game better performance now. I've actually got like a game booster sort of thing on, um, Razor Cortex. Um, I actually downloaded that the other day because I noticed my computer suddenly starts slowing down over time. So, uh, and then that actually fixes it. That actually fixes the issues. Because it frees up like a gig of RAM or something, which is very nice. So that means, it, that means I can run my computer pretty well. So we're just waiting for this to load. It shouldn't take too long. So we'll stop with um, Gowan Field and fly um, um, two uniform zero. So yeah, I would. Put, I don't know what the cruising altitude would be. Probably like six thousand feet, which is nothing. But this goes. You can go anywhere in the world. Ah, uh, yeah, we've got a bit of news to talk about in terms of Microsoft Flight Simulator. There's actually a new update coming out next week, I believe it was, which is the very world update so I can't wait to see that we might do a flight there's also a second DLC plane that we will be flying next week we can do a flight in Japan with that because it is in Japan so we'll talk about what, what's gonna happen it's gonna be stuff in Japan which would be great all right so we got the good old joystick here but yeah, this game has been pretty good over the time I got since the patch came out. Patch 1.8.3. It's actually been pretty reasonable for me. Alright, we're just waiting for... This is the slowest bit. Here, when it gets to like the... Um, 
that bit there, they can see. So by the way, this aircraft costs you 12 Australian dollars, I believe it's 12 Australian dollars. And yeah, it's the cheapest aircraft to purchase at full box of flights like it right now. And yeah, I'll just go to, I'll show you around it, show you all the views, show you what you get with it, and go from there. It's actually, I think it's very similar to like the um, Piper Cub, whatever it is, that Piper Cub that it comes with this game. Except it's got else in it. So we'll see how it goes. I'll show you around. Here we go, now it's loaded. So here we go, welcome to Boys Air Terminal or Go and Field. Visibility is currently 26 11 nautical miles. It's currently 11.49 am. And there's our little plane. Uh, so, like I said, 91 knots true SB, 25,000 feet, 5 hour endurance, and 700 nautical miles range. Um, one issue already, um, as you can see, oh, wait for it to load. Um, if it does want to. Um, as you can see, um, you can see the tail number, that does not match. So that's one thing that's um, something you don't get. Unlike the um, unlike the um, Carinado aircraft that we last reviewed, the um, 182 Skyline. Right, let's get in. So we'll start with the interior. So this is your default view, which is kind of crap. And, it, and then this is your view here. This is the one that you actually um, fly with. So you have your two screens, and you have your autopilot right at the top there. Yeah, and then we've got something here, and then we have your yoke, and then you got you can see your joystick, then you see the wing, and then back to here, which I have no idea what that is. Anyway, so that's pretty much what you get for the inside views. On the outside, as you can see, it looks pretty dang cool. Um, it has a 5800, uh, I guess you could say red line. Which is actually a huge red line for a plane. It's got two dot two dots true airspeed, so that's how fast the wind is. But yeah, let's jump into the cockpit again. Uh, and then there, that's your landing view. Whilst if I press space, that's your landing view. There, that's that's good for taxi. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this aircraft started. So what we're gonna do is first turn on the battery, obviously and the avionics. We're going to contact clearance so we can get our clearance. Clearance delivery November 725 Kilo Alpha IFR to two uniform zero ready to copy. November 725 Kilo Alpha is cleared to two uniform zero airport as filed. Take off runway 10 right climb and maintain 5,000 feet. Departure frequency is 126.9 er squawk 2076. Let's just calibrate that. Read out back. Five thousand feet. Then just click on this. Filed. Click on your um, to set your um, CDI. Your you click on the um, you click on the um, HSI here, and you go click on to that. All right. So now we're going to request pushback. So we contact ground. We're going to request pushback. No, we can't request pushback. We'll request pushback manually. And then we'll try to get this plane started. It's a bit of a pain in the bum to start. You can turn on your bearing pointers there. You just click through that. So you've got like, your GPS stuff. And I can just have, I don't know, something else, some other stuff there. But there we go. That should be enough. So now we just go. Let's turn the fuel pump on. There you go. Fuel pump's priority. As you see, full gallons per hour fuel pump. Just like that. Uh, turn on the lights on, turn that on, turn that on. And you should be able to do just start it. And sometimes it does not like starting. It's, it's a bit of a hassle because you need to know. Okay, set the parking brake. Sometimes it just doesn't start, but. You know, like, I can't figure out why. Unless there's a switch here. I just press Control E. Then we'll start right up. Just like that, we've got our engine running. All right, so we've got the ACE. So what's our information? So I'll just do this once. Will it work? Guess not. 
Boise ground November 725 Kilo Alpha with Yankee ready to taxi IFR. November 725 Kilo Alpha taxi to and hold short of runway 10 right using taxiway Bravo. Contact yeah, power on 118.1 when ready. Right, we got got our taxi clearance. Let's go. Taxi to and hold short runway. All right, so right via taxiway, Bravo, five take the parking brake off. It should move by itself, just like that. You don't even need a front. You don't even need any throttle to, to taxi this plane. Because if you put too much throttle and then you suddenly brake, it can easily tip over. Easily. I've had it tip over once before and then it's to recover. You can just accelerate it, and it would just come back down now, that's going to be so hard to taxi on. But make sure you're staying around 20 knots because that is your, um, um, yeah, well I don't care about that. So you can adjust the camera settings if you want to, but I'm just going to taxi with this. But yeah, so um, I hope you do kind of enjoy this video, make sure you hit the like button if you do, if you're stopping by for the first time, please smash the subscribe button. Um, I upload videos every single day, tomorrow I'll be back to obviously 2. And when we drive through Volvo S7700A, so just making sure we stay um, relatively. So there's November 70 Alpha Charlie right there, so go for a flight. Yeah, like yeah, like I said, well we're speeding a little bit. People go 25, yeah, we go 25, but but yeah, you don't. Know, I have my throttle at idle. It's not doing absolutely. It's doing no, yeah. See, 20 knots exceeded. Oh, and see what I mean? Right, flaps down. Get ready to um, do our takeoff. I always put my flaps down when I'm doing a takeoff, and you don't even need that much speed to take off. I'll show you when I take off. I usually take off at 40 knots. It's crazy. You just need this. I was going to leave that actually there. That might slow it down a little bit if I do that. So I've actually got my um, joystick actually um, or my um, I guess my um, what are they called the. Um, not any arms, it's the um I think they are not the um I don't know what they're called, cool. I'm sorry. Um I've got my joy I just said I've got my joystick up all the way back. Like I've got full pitch um, full pitch up so just in case I do fall over, I can it will recover easily. And as you can see we're going a little bit slower. So like I said, we don't need any throttle. As you can see I've got zero percent throttle on my um um tack over there. Which is, yeah, which is surprising. So it's very cloudy today, so the good thing is we are flying IFR, not VFR. But yeah, so we're going to be cruising, I think we're going to be cruising by about 6,000, 7,000 feet, maybe. So it's going to take about, yeah, 27 minutes to get, 26 minutes to get to the destination. So let's hopefully to see if that goes well. So yeah, because when I let go, yeah, as you can see, it's going to go a little bit faster. So that's what I recommend doing is make sure when you taxi keep your um keep your um joystick um like ha hold your joystick to a point it doesn't doesn't roll over when you brake. Alright. Right, we're gonna hold short here, do we? So uh, yeah, we have to hold short. I think I can go a little bit further Generic down. November, alpha Charlie, to That's a long hold short line. If that's the case. Nah, I need to go down further than that. So I'm following the, um, I'm following the um, GPS part. So I'm following the... Generic November, alpha Charlie, with the Yankee ready to taxi IFR. Okay, I wonder if they're coming behind me. Generic November, yeah. alpha Charlie, taxi to and hold short. I'm pretty sure this is a whole short ride down here. Contact tower on one one eight decimal one one ready. So yeah, we'll just quickly yeah, that's it, that's a good thing with these lines and show you where exactly it is. But yeah. Taxi to and hold short runway one zero right using tax away Bravo generic Yeah, there it is. There it is. I was saying yeah, hold short line way back there, that won't do anything. Alright, so we're going to go continue our taxi to the edge of the runway, just like we are now. And then we will stop, we'll hold short here. 
Then we go and request our takeoff clearance. Okay, don't, don't go anywhere. Hold on the brakes because otherwise it's going to go stuff somewhere. Contact tower. Boise Tower, November 725 Kilo Alpha, ready for IFR departure runway 10 right. And then as soon as we clear the takeoff, I can let go of the brakes. November 725 Kilo Alpha, hold short runway 10 right. Traffic is generic, on final. Okay, we're not ready to go yet, so I can just, just do that, just hold on the brakes. Hold short runway, one zero right, five kilo alpha. Okay, so keep holding on the brakes, and we're just going to wait for... Oh. Actually, I don't know that, you press um, pause brake and it actually opens up the um, thing. Actually, no. So, so, guess, so I'm guessing it's Sky West. That's on short final. I just legit have my um, uh, brakes on night while I'm waiting. Because otherwise I'll roll onto the runway and I don't want to interrupt this person's landing. Especially if it's a live, live traffic as well. So Sky West 4089 is going to be landing here by the looks of things. You can see like how the propellers move, that's so cool. So after here we'll take off and I can talk about what's good about this aircraft and why you should get it or why you shouldn't get it and stuff like that. So here we go. That person's landing, I think. So who are we waiting for? Twenty-four ninety-one RPM is what we're doing. But as soon as I let go, we'll be um, climbing in. That's so cool, you know? That, that's one of the things I like about this plane. You don't even need... Right, hey, where is this aircraft on short final? Okay, we've got clearance to take off. Traffic is generic, on final. Right, so let's do that, and then we'll get going. This is where we need throttle. For takeoff runway one zero right, November seven two five kilo alpha. There we go. That was a bit of a wait, so I don't know why I was had to hold short there. It doesn't even tell us to line up and wait or anything like that. I like flight simulator ten or P three D, or even the older flight simulators two thousand four two thousand two. So we'll have the eighty zero. That's a line. go and there we go slowly add full throttle probably a little bit quick that's all right let's jump into the cockpit jump down a little bit and then go so full power temperatures and pressures are in the green speed to live and rotate just like that that's how quick it is we're already up in the air and uh, we're already climbing at a good rate. So, just like that. It only took me about 20... Probably, uh, it only took like 5 seconds to get off the ground. That's how quick this aircraft is, right? Turn the lights on. We're going to go ahead and go autopilot on, turn it on nav mode. And turn it on climbing speed. I recommend 74 knots for the cruising out climbing speed. For that and yeah, just like that, it'll it'll kind of. Boise, that's how you say it, Boise. I thought it's Boise. One two six decimal niner for five kilo alpha. All right, let's go. Boise departure November seven two five kilo alpha is at three thousand seven hundred feet, climbing five thousand. Alright, we're a thousand feet to go to five thousand already. That's why I recommend I made a bit of Okay, visual two four approach is what we're gonna go with. I don't know. Okay, yeah, see, so it's still climbing at a reasonable good speed. It's not stalling or out, stalling out or anything like that, which is good. So, 6,900 feet is where we're going, so we're going to nice feet. If you don't want to make. Anyway, so the autopilot's flying it just as well, so if you go here and here, you can see we're right on the line. That's a bit better than the Carolina 182 because we can sway. So, what do you get? So, like I said, it's around about $12. Well, I believe it's around about $12. 
for this aircraft and it's obviously a tail dragger and yeah it's sort of like a it's like a similar thing so the kit fox sti i believe it's very similar to the um so now we fly to the next um, point oh it's leveling off no, i don't want you to level off let me just do this You'll click climbing then, I hope. Oh, we're stuck at 5,000. No, we're, no, we're still climbing, just very, very slowly. We might need to go lower speed, I reckon. I think that's like the ultimate speed for this aircraft. Actually, I've got to Google it. I'll uh, find out what it is. I think it's around... We do have about... Because it's the Kit Fox 7 SVI. So apparently he climbs 120 miles per hour. Climb rate is 1800 feet per minute, should be. So let's actually change that to feet per minute. Where's our plane on here? If you press this, let's go center it. There we go. Tower on 118 decimal 1 horizon near 2703. Okay, make sure it stays. Oh, it's not even going up to it. Let's go to like 1400. Hey, let's change that to. Uh, uh, let's change that to. Let's take the out of the way. Not that low. Let's go up a bit further. Let's go up a little bit faster. 76, let's go 76. Because we're going closer to stall speed, stall speeds. Is it for following the GTA? Yeah, it is following the FNS, that's alright. So I believe this is our cru cruising altitude because we have our um, fix. So let's talk about some news. So we press this to the first exit, so that's where we're going currently. Alright, we should be speeding up very soon. Hopefully we don't need to climb any more. Okay, yeah, look at this. <laughs> so let's go to 6,900 feet. That was about cruising altitude, so we're going to go to 9,400 feet now. So we're going to 9,400 feet. Okay, let's go there. Flight level change at... Do we have to do some traffic that checking? Alright, so we're going to 9400 feet. So we're saying about 74 knots, I reckon. Even though it's not kind of cold at my looks of things, it actually goes to like 50 knots. That's pathetic. Alright, so we'll talk about some of the news. Um, in terms of the Microsoft Flight Simulator. So obviously, um, there is a new um, uh, update coming up and it's going to be its very first world update, for the very first many I'd assume. I'd assume. Um, okay, we're doing that. Yeah, we'll be fine. Yeah, very first of many I would say. Um, so that's going to include things like um, so new world up to like new landmarks and things like that. They're going to go ahead and revamp Japan, which is very, very, very cool that, that that's going to be the case. Which means that might be ca happening like for, for a very long time. Because I think they're planning to support this game for a very, very, very long time. Because this is a game that there are lots of new flight simulators, lot, lots of new flight simulators simulators are going to run with the FX6 like it used to be. And yeah, which is very, very, very cool. Alright, we're getting out to our um, flying speed of 74. We're climbing very, very slowly, um, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. 
Oh, we've got a big wind um, winds right there, like a big um, bit of turbulence because it's pretty windy. Um, I see it, is. it doesn't. That's why. That's one complaint. I can't even see where the wind is on this pla on this um, screen here. Usually the wind will be. Actually, I'll see if it's actually down here. Just clicking on it just to see what I can do. Yeah, there you go. You got a heading. It's usually. Four thousand four hundred feet. I can see them. So I can see the up there. Right? So what's that aircraft that fly? So let's find out. So it's November zero seven zero Alpha Charlie. It is a. So let's go from Boise, Boise to Provo, Utah. That's an hour flight. It's an SR-22 Turbo. I don't know why they didn't use an SR-22 model for that. But yeah, so it's an SR-22. Okay, as you can see, it's actually trying to get 34 nods. But yeah, I reckon that's... I know, it's still here. It's still climbing, so, so be quiet. So 1,000 feet to go-ish. Still climbing, still climbing. Still climbing. Still climbing. Still climbing. Still climbing. Is it? No, it's not. It's a little bit faster than that. But like 676 I reckon was good. Because I'm getting asked to expedite it and it's not wanting to expedite. So now we're going a little bit slower. Oh, we've got lots and lots and lots of um, Okay, let's actually see if we can increase it. If we slow down here. This wind is pretty <laughs> impeccable. Uh, pretty impossible to almost fly this aircraft, so we're just going to continue expediting it because we're going to ask to. Hopefully, we don't ask it repeatedly. Oh, we are. Yeah, I'm trying. I guess I can't because I can't go much faster than that because otherwise the wind's just going to blow me off guard. Where's our aircraft here? Yeah, there it is. Alright, we're almost there. Come on, come on, aircraft, you can do it. Otherwise, I'm on, I can't ask for another, another altitude because this is our long. This is for. Um, so, we are 12 minutes away from the airport, so, we might as well quickly talk about some other news. How Strangman has raced his 2008 Bugatti Veyron against an SSC Tuatara. Which is absolutely was an amazing thing to watch. Um, he was running the full thousand horsepower, which is good. One thousand one one thousand one horsepower, and he was racing against a seventeen hundred and fifty horsepower five point nine liter twin turbo. I think it was a twin turbo um, hypercar. Um, new, 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 new legendary hypercar, I would say. He says he might need one, so I think he might be getting one in the future. Alongside the Veyron, the Inventador, the Guyana. I mean, I mean, Life of Pilot also was talking about he might be selling the Inventador to get like an SVJ. I highly doubt that would be the case. I think he'd be keeping that car forever. Because that's his first ever V12 Lamborghini. He will not sell the Inventador. He loves that car too much. Because, I mean, he's had, he's had problems with the Inventador recently. Um, the clutch is like, stuffed in that car. He needs to get a new clutch. Alright, we don't even need to make it up there, which is good. Descend and maintain 8,800 feet, 5 kilo alpha. Uh, 8,500 feet. Let's change the vertical speed. Turn that off and turn that on to flight level change. Oh, actually, no, not to that. We're changing it down. So we're going to start descending now. But yeah, so that's very cool. Um, yeah, it's very cool that he actually did that video. He had the um, founder of SSC. I think it was the founder of SSC. Uh, uh, reached out to him and asked if he wants to race and stuff and people were thinking oh it's promotional content it's actually not it's just a bit of fun 5 kilo alpha climb and maintain 9400 you just asked me to descend to 8800 climb and maintain 9400 feet 5 kilo alpha right, let's go to a stable we'll just use this one instead increase it ok 
Okay, vertical speed, let's increase that to... Uh, not decrease it. Ah! For some reason, it's the opposite. So that's probably a disadvantage. Like, you expect up go to go increase and down to go decrease, but actually it's up to go decrease and down to go increase in this aircraft. So we're going to go, we're just going to climb around about that so we can get to 9400. We've probably got to try to get us out of the clouds. But yeah, let's go to 9400 now. So our so what, what was our visual two four? So we're about so we should be expecting that to be to the left of us. I'm not I'm not really a huge fan of visual approach personally. I prefer um, ILS or uh, VOR or any navigational ones because I wish I was program it down like the aircraft flying into itself. But I have to fly it in myself. So let's let's get up to 9400 feet. Hopefully we don't have to climb any far much further than that because that's going to be a pain in the bum, pain in the derriere. That's what family used to say. But yeah, so that's very cool. Um, also, Burlak did a video of doing a behind the scenes um, video on driving straight man's Ferrari 458 um, through. Um, so there we go. 9400 feet, making sure out. That's yeah, that's in touch. So now we can start speeding up now to our cruise. Alright, can I stay at 8,800 feet, please? Descend and maintain 8,800 feet, 5 kilo alpha. I don't know why I actually asked us to do that. Oh, where's 8,800? Okay. Uh, 8,800. Vertical speed, we're decreasing that to about negative 500 because we're not that far down. From it. Alright, so let's continue flying. I might take a photo of it now. So I'll take off the um, objective thing, so give me a second. I was going to quickly plug in my controller as well while I was done at it. So we can fly the drone. Hopefully the drone flies this time. So let me just do that. There we go. There we go. Assistance, turn off the um, navigation aid phase so we can turn off the route to the waypoints. There we go. Go back. Resume, turn that off, jump into drone mode, hopefully the drone flies this time, there we go, sweet. 5 kilo alpha, please expedite your descent to 8,800 feet. Yeah, let's hide, let's hide that. Okay, where are I descending? So, just ignore that November 70 alpha Charlie's down the phone now. I'll actually do it the other side. Yeah, do it out here, there we go. No, well, I want to do it low, so I can see the ground. Yeah, let's do that. Five kilo alpha contact, Salt Lake Center on one one eight. Okay, there we go. We got our. Generic zero alpha Charlie contact, Salt Lake Center on one one eight decimal zero five. Okay, I'll go first. So I'll be in two. Salt Lake Center, November seven two five kilo alpha eight thousand nine hundred. So there we go. We got our thumbnail picture. Okay, continue as planned. Five kilo alpha climb and maintain one thousand feet. You can't back up your mind, can't you, ATC? Do you want me at eighty eight hundred or can I just keep climbing to seven thousand feet and be done with it? Oh, uh, not any nine thousand, we need to go to ten thousand. Vertical speed, we're back down a thousand feet per minute. This ATC, come on. There we go, that's my issue. Generic November 70 Alpha, Charlie Salt Lake Center, continue as planned. Altimeter, 200.91. Alright, so we're climbing to 9400 feet. Climb and maintain 9, this ATC can't make up a bloody mind, it's so funny. Do you want me at 9400 feet or do you want me at. 10,000 feet, or do you want me at 8,800 feet? It just made me want to descend again. What the hell? This ATC sucks. Descend and maintain 8,800 feet, 5 kilo alpha. Decrease the vertical speed. So about there. 
This, this ATC doesn't know what they're doing. There we go, there we go. Um, Microsoft, that's something you should fix. Azobo Studio, that too. You need to fix, like, the, the cruising altitude sort of thing. Well, well, or even, like, especially in Idaho. Because it keeps going 8,800, 9,400, 10,000, 9,400, 8,800. And they can't make up their bloody mind. Oh well. So, this aircraft. Uh, what do I think of it? Um, I think it's a pretty good aircraft for twelve dollars. It's actually uh, um, pretty good. I mean, the only downside is you get the default G4000 that didn't make their own, and you also yeah have the issue where if you don't have your um, joystick and a, or joystick or yoke or pitch at least like your pitch uh, down the full or something like that, if you break, it's going to tip over. That's probably the only two issues I can think of. Apart from that, this aircraft is pretty dang good. I actually quite like this aircraft. Oh, we got very big windstorm wind at us. And we're going into the air, so that's not good. But yeah. Um, also too, as you can see, um, if you look around, the actual world is blurry in this aircraft. Even though it's actually like, I don't think it's even a single wind, uh, windshield or anything like that. Is a bit, er, but that's something they could fix hopefully in the future. Apart from that, this aircraft is actually really, really, really nice. I really like it. Is it better than the Cessna Skyline? I would say yes, in a way. Uh, because A, it follows the nav very well, uh, B, it's a bit prairie right in front of us. So we're actually nearly there. Um, yeah. Wait, is that where, is that where we landed? No, I don't think it is. I think we're going somewhere else. There we go. Climb and maintain 9,400 feet. Uh, that's 9,400. Climb and maintain 9,400 feet, 5 kilo alpha. Okay, so we're going to go right about there. That sucks. <laughs> that's what I made up. Like... I have, this is the first time I've experienced this, but it's obviously the United States. Well, the other, the other areas, the ACC, in my opinion, is completely fine. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the other ATC, in my opinion, like in the other areas, is completely fine. I, I can fly with that easily. But I think it's still going to get us to turn around and then go land, in, land at the airport. But yeah, that, that's my that's my yeah that's my thinking. But yeah, that's that's the issue that I've having so far. It's just, in, especially doing this flight, now the ATC can't figure out because of the weather they can't figure out where to put me. So they could have just left me like here. I would have been fine here anyway. So yeah, how long has it been? Does it say? So this one should be there in about two minutes apparently. But that's not where we're landing. We're landing runway two four. I mean, just to show you, we can't even. This reason why I don't like the. Um, wait, if I press space, we actually should just do it properly. So I go here, the menu. I don't think this does visual approaches. Okay, runway. Oh, yeah, so you can't do anything. Arrival. So 8300 out where we're we going. Descend and maintain 8300 feet 5 kilo alpha. Okay, let's go to 8300. Oh, wait, let me change it there. Hang on, give me a second, let's do it there. If I need to get out of here, maybe, to make a change, that'd be silly. Oh, it is changing. I want to go to 8300. And now let's just go ahead and select. Our vertical speed to go down to. Okay, actually, I guess it's actually like a real aircraft. But yeah, but yeah, the blur, the blurriest is a bit of an issue. I would say. Let's go to switch it. Okay, let's just not only 400 feet. So the air airport should be right in front of us. Cool. I think it's the weather and also the mountains. Climb and Try to get me out of the weather. Feet, 
That's where I actually am exposed. This would be a horrible. Okay, come on. Medical speed. See what I mean? I'm just literally just going. Descend and maintain 8,500 feet, 5 kilo. Let's speed. Let's go down a little bit faster. There we go. I think we actually. I think. Yeah, yeah. So we're flying over the runway now. So if we look below us, I believe we'll see a runway down here somewhere. Okay, it's actually getting us to descend this time. Good stuff. Do you actually know what you're doing there, lady? Descend and maintain 7,900 feet, 5 kilo alpha. Yeah, yeah, let's keep descending. She actually knows what she's doing here. Hopefully we get a heading and then something says, I'll turn left to you so we can report the runway in sight. So I think the runway, we actually flew just behind the runway right now. We have a good behind her. Seventy-nine hundred. We might be at eighty-five hundred. No, you don't know what you're doing. Oh my God! Look at this. Let's climb eight hundred feet per minute. Five kilo alpha climb and maintain nine thousand feet. Climb and maintain nine thousand feet. Five kilo alpha. What is this? What is this? All right. We'll see what happens. Okay, shout out to Marco, number 7203, fly the A320N, uh, at 35,000 feet. Alright, hopefully that's our last descent, so we're going to 7800 feet, so we need to go to vertical speed on. There you go, now it's doing it, so there we go, we've got 1000 feet to go, hopefully that's the last time we actually have to climb and descend, I'm probably not. I think we need to turn around so to go towards the airport. I follow what they say, I only follow what air traffic controls say. for it. Alright, we're going to go to the opposite of eight, so we'll do that. And we're five miles away, so now it's actually getting us to descend. So, 80, so we'll be able to go head to west, we're going to go to heading to seven zero. Heading 270 and click on the heading so we, so we can look for the airport. So now we can actually go and fly towards it now. So we're still descending to 6900 feet. Not, it's a nice feet. Alright, let's go and find this airport and then we go and get ready to land and then I'll give you my final verdict whether you should get this aircraft or not. Because honestly, I would have to say it's actually a pretty good aircraft. I got my lights. Oh, I forgot my flaps up. Oops, see Daisy. That's my fault. Oh, well, that's okay. Alright, looks like we're going into the. Um, Alright. We should be right at the airport. Like, uh, like the. Uh, yeah, because it's actually it was at 6 o'clock. So, 
So I think I'll say we've got a runway in sight because we've actually seen the runway in our screen here. I know exactly where it is. I can see where the green line ends. So I'll say we've got the runway in sight. Five kilo alpha runway in sight. Turn right, two seven zero. Turn right, heading two seven zero. Five kilo alpha. All right, we're going to get ready for our approach. We're landing about five mi in about five miles. So let's go contact traffic. Announce position. Two uniform zero traffic November seven two five kilo alpha five miles east inbound visual runway two four. Okay, I can see the runway right there. That's where we're landing. So now we're going to have to go and hand fly it. So two four. So we need to make sure we're actually at heading two four zero for that. Oh god, look at the wind. Look at the wind. Oh my god, the wind is so hectic. 240, and we're going to press the approach button. Because now, now, now I can see the airport. We're in traffic. We'll start our approach. Down to um, runway 24, which is down here. So that's where I need to go press the space bar so we can see where we are. That's actually a good view there. Right, I'm actually going to half fly this. So we're going to half fly this into the runway, which the runway is down there. You can actually clearly see it, even though it's very blurry in this aircraft. But you can actually see it. So that's probably an issue that um, the people that made it, I forgot who made it. Um, I'll, it'll be in the description who, um, who made it anyway, or in the title as well. So next week we'll be flying another new aircraft that came out, it's another regular general aviation aircraft and I think, honestly, it might be the best one yet. Um, and you'll see why, it's actually very, very, very cool. So we're starting our descent, so we're going to put the flaps down fully, down to flaps 6 degrees, because that's the only node that we have, I can see the runway still. Right, so we're on final. I guess I can say this is final. Two uniform zero traffic November seven two five kilo alpha is on final runway two four to land. It's actually a nice airport area. A nice area. I've turned off objectives. I just realised that. I should turn on the um, nav the navigation points as well. I need to turn that back on because I actually forgot to turn that off, didn't I? So turn that on. So I usually have that on because I don't know where it is that very well. Right, continue to climb designated altitude, but we actually got the uh, actual runway with about 6,000 feet, 2.3 2, 2 miles away from the runway. We've got our flaps down, we've got 2 miles away. <coughs> I'll do the throttle, which should be good to actually descend, it actually holds up here, it's very high. And we just touch the uh, back wheel. I think we touch, I think, yeah, I think in the tower dragger it's opposite, so we touch the front wheel first, then touch the back wheels. Right. Still see the runway about one up one mile away. <coughs> and yeah. That was a nice flight. I I honestly really like this aircraft. I think it's the it's not the it's the best one we've tested so far. So I'll talk about the pros and cons in a moment. But uh, when we let when we're on the ground, I'm just focusing on landing at the moment. So we are probably a little bit too far out to land yet. Yeah we are. So we've got a left turn coming, but yeah, I don't like this blurriness. That's one thing I don't like. So yeah, I'll talk about what I don't like in a moment. And what I like about it. And yeah, and I hope you do, did enjoy this flight. Make sure you have your seatbelts fastened. We're literally a mile away from the runway. So make sure you put your um, seatbelts on and all that good stuff. And yeah, we'll land this aircraft. It's a very long landing strip by the looks of things. Long, 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 long runway, I should say. I can't talk today. And yeah, we'll see how this goes. So this is an uncontrolled airport. I can't see the puppy lights. So we're going to go left. I'm going to actually switch outside so I can actually see how lined up it is. So we just... There's no guidelines because of the visual approach. So we're just going to make sure we are well lined up. Alright. I don't see any touchdown point. 
Right, here we go. 5,000 feet. Not sure. And then, boom! Well, almost. And we have landed. Welcome to South Prairie. And we just hold out the brakes. Oh, see what I mean? Now I'll just do this to this. So there we go. We've made it. We've landed. We are on the airport. That's it. We are here. So now we're just going to clear off the runway and then turn off the engine and we have done. We are done. Wait, so turn off the engine in this aircraft. I'll just press Control Shift E. Alright. It is a long runway. Holy moly. Look how long this thing is. Well, actually, didn't do too badly with that landing, so I'll go to this to fix it here. Just like that. Now we just end the flight. We just park up here. So we're cleared off the runway. Oh. Put the parking brakes on, actually. Then it won't move. So we are cleared off the runway. Two uniform zero traffic November 725 Kilo Alpha is clear of the runway. Cool, and now we just shut it off, but press Control Shift E. Just like that, because I don't know how to turn this aircraft off. There we go, turn the aviolics off. There we go, we've got our screen here saying we have completed the flight. One landing, one takeoff. I'll take it. Indicate Fox aircraft. To the master off. Right, so that is the flight in the um, Cessna, no, not the Cessna, this Kit Fox S7 STI. For by, I'll find out actually, I'll go into the marketplace after this. So, what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? I like for a fact that it's an easy aircraft to fly, it's quick, and also it's quick and it's also pretty stable with the, um, there's not, not really much stalling that could happen. Like, it, you can't stall the aircraft easily. But, so, and, but what I don't like, however, the blurry, like, outside, I don't really like that. I'm pretty sure this aircraft yeah, has no windows. Um, I do not like the fact that... Well, I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess that's the only thing I don't really like about this aircraft. I'm trying to think. I don't like the fact that you can easily tip it over. Like, if I... I wonder if it will move, yeah. Well, the engine's off anyway, we won't move. I don't like the fact that you can easily tip it over. Don't like that. And... Number three, I guess that's the only two things. So the blurry and the um, the fact that you can almost tip it over. What I like about it, quick, easy aircraft to fly, very simple systems. All you need to do is turn the avionics on and fuel pump on to start the engine. Actually, number three I don't like, the engine sometimes doesn't start. Some, sometimes that's an issue with your payware aircraft. That you can't figure out what to do or anything like that. Like, because it's actually very too, too basic sometimes. But overall, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. It's a lot of fun finding Kit Fox STI. It's probably going to be the only Kit Fox STI you'll get here. And yes, yeah, so let's go to the... Um, let's, now that we've finished the um, flight, we can go ahead and go to the main menu. And we'll go and have a proper look at it. Once it's once the main menu. Very good flight. Um, did, we had, also, too, as you saw, I was playing on Ultra once again. Zero lag whatsoever. Only at the start it lagged, but after that it didn't lag at all. I'll gladly take that la lag free experience any day of the week. Alright, so now we're going to go to the marketplace here. Go to official content. <laughs> then go to aircraft. Piston. So, um, spoiler alert, that's next week's episode, the M20R Ovation. We'll be flying that next week. BT Studio made it. Uh, so this is a, a little bit about it. 3D models by Jason of Jason Brawl. The high, ICI high wing is, an, is a single engine, so yeah. Yeah, cruising altitude speed of 105 miles per hour. And yeah, that's just a little bit of information about that. I just need to know how much this cost. Give me a second. I think I can find it. Kit Fox. I 
Okay, so if you have uh, if you have actually shot with them before, you get the aircraft for free. Otherwise, I paid like twelve dollars for it. It was very very cheap. I think it was twelve dollars forty cents or something like that. So the, so yeah, it actually came from MX play. This play. I see. So yeah. So you can actually get it for free. And apparently um, someone wants to get rid of it. I think it's actually a pretty good aircraft though, honestly. Price. So it's $33. I think it's cheaper on um, Microsoft Flight Simulator than it is on MX Play. But yeah, so if, I, so if you want to buy it, you just go to your market play, marketplace, go to aircraft, go to piston, and you'll find it right here. Right in the middle here. So you have the Cessna CT182 Skyline and the M20R. So it's got 2 out of 5, so I personally recommend it uh, if you want a bit of a fun, fun aircraft. They probably will update it every now and then. And then you also have the M20R version, which is what we're flying next week. Uh, hopefully in Japan. Well, that's where we're going to wrap things up for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hope you have enjoyed this video with the um, Ovation. I highly recommend if you uh, with, uh, with the Ovation, with the um, Kit Fox. Um, I highly recommend you go and purchase it. I think it's a really good aircraft. Except for a couple of minor things like the blurry cockpit and the fact that the, um, t the um, tends to um, fade and some things don't work, according to other users. I think it's a really good aircraft and some people won't even want it removed. I think it's a good aircraft, personally. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit the like button down below. If you're stopping by for the first time, please subscribe. Take care of a good one. Bye-bye.